Hello, Born Review Nation! Gabe! Nick! <laughs> and we are here today to review a new cricket video. We talked about doing Cricket, cricket Tuesday. Cricket Tuesday! Love it, love it. Um, especially since right now we don't have any Major League Baseball. Again, that's my favorite sport. And, you know, realistically speaking, again, they kind of mirror each other. But, uh. <laughs> don't say that too loud. <laughs> but. Lose their mind. Uh, we want to thank, uh. Show a Shaw. Show a Shaw for requesting this video. And um, what video is it, Nick? Chris Gale's 50 runs in just 12 balls. So I did a little bit of research on who Chris Gale was. Right. He's a Jamaican. Make sure I get this right. Jamaican cricketer who plays international cricket for the West Indies, according to Wikipedia. He uh, actually announced his retirement last year, right. and then not too much longer after that, he's like, well, maybe I want to play some ODIs against uh, India. Right, right, right. Sorry, India. <laughs> so he came back, and now he's the captain of, uh, he was named the captain of the West Indies ODI squad for their series against India. Okay. So, I mean, this guy, he's just got it in his blood. He decides to walk away, and then, no, I don't want to walk away. I want to come back, which, you know, when you love something, we can understand that 100%. And he could just rake. I guess so. You I mean, can just rake. That's a baseball term, by the way. We say, well, you rake, that means you get a really, really good hitter. And, you know, I thought about that. That's the one really cool thing about cricket because you're up there basically until you get out. So, and, and, you know, you get so many balls, man, where a guy is hot. Think about the home run derby. But if that was really, you know, in a game, oh, you know what I mean? You, you, when you're hot, you don't even want to get off the plate. So if you're hot <laughs> and you got the stroke going, is there strategy too when you when you think about it? Like in baseball, if a guy is hot, he let's say he's hit two home runs, either I may walk him or I might give him that unintentional intentional pass, which means I'm gonna put one in his back. Go ahead, take first base. You know what I mean? Well, it it reminds me of uh, which Rocky movie was it? I can't remember which one, but you got Duke the trainer for Apollo Creed screaming, "Stop away from him!" <laughs> <laughs> that Get was... away from me. <laughs> uh, These guys are just going off and they got the momentum. It's like, no, why would we play against this guy? Uh, yeah, I was just amazing. reading right here that says that he went past Brian Lara. Hey, look at that, Lara. Lara's record of 10,348 runs. So obviously wow. he is a record keeper there. So That means the boy can rake. rake. Yes. <laughs> well, without further ado, let's check it out. Here we go. Boy Reviews. Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. All right. I'm looking forward to this burst. There's going to be fireworks in there. This is going to be massive. Just take a look against the Renegades against the Hurricanes a couple of games ago. In the power play, they hit 84 runs. Thanks mainly to that man striding out to the crease, Chris Gard. There's a little bit of intent in the way that he's walking out to the middle there. Normally he's cool, he's second Number to the one. wicket. Chris Gard is now first on the wicket. His partner's has followed him. Yeah. So this could be a good sign for everybody yeah. watching. Don't leave this off. This is going to be box office. Okay. Okay. Like I thought he was doing no more thing. <laughs> but he hasn't had the biggest tournament. Yet to get a 50 in this big bash, Chris Gale. His strike rate's 136, which is respectable, but we know him well, as the man that can go They're hard. feeling it, man. Score, can't stop right, it at least the career strike rate of 140. I've gone so he needs to go at least that tonight. We call that to being get the in the zone. Oh, yeah. it certainly does. And, uh, Brad Hodge starting with a left arm seamer to him. If uh, Chris has got any issues with his batting or his technique he seems to worry a little bit with left arm seamers so good positive move here from brad hodge and i hope as a cricket fan and a, as a chris gale batting fan that the big man fires tonight you need to be nice to see greg west in the attack open up on debut at his last start two for 24 so he started well to chris gale That's there's no doubt the key man tonight with a slip in straight away down the leg side and a wide up to the right yeah, West, um, his pace was pretty good. He had a really deceptive bouncer in Adelaide. He surprised all the batsmen with him, and that's not a bad delivery to, to Chris Gale, who likes to lock on that front foot and hit through the line. Well, it's straight early doors. It's well across his stumps. All coming back into his stumps. He's back away from us here to Chris Gale. And he's off away, pushing hard for two. Is he? He yes. is, actually. So There's something in his strike here, no one's there. Not his last five strides there, but 
his first five. <laughs> We haven't seen him exactly out of first gear in the field or running between wickets. He pushed one down to runs. deep it off the other day. Kevin just didn't need yeah, the ball. Which raised the eye of Ricky Ponting. Did a junior called it, didn't he? He did. He looked too flashy to get that next ball. And he did. Favoring the leg side. <laughs> well, well. Yeah, it's not well. a bad length, that. Just in the splice of the bat. Dale will think once he sides up a couple of balls, can he go back over West Head? But the men out of square leg on the fence, third man. Well, this on is the tragedy fence. right there. Tax so yourself, wants to go don't the, uh, ever, don't move, don't bit go. Of elevation. I think what you're saying, yeah, what you're going to see uh, here, what well, you're hopefully going to see here is a Chris Gale that gives, still gives himself time. We all know he can clear the boundary. Oh, Buffy oh, oh, goes! Oh. He gave himself Sounds the same. Three balls he got himself. <laughs> They always tell, say you can tell up the sound when you got it. Yep. Shot that one guy, he's always say, you got it. Oh, oh, that's that's oh. Pretty good ball, hit 88 meters. Yeah. Several rows deep. Looks like made a loud noise. Hey. Yeah, that loud noise. Tell you what, if you spur the wicket tonight, <laughs> get ready for some catches in the crowd. Long arms oh, going out on the boundary. Like Oh, <laughs> you heard that one. Upper deck? Oh, upper deck. I'm talking about home run derby. Have fun. Well, that's just genuine power. We've got a smile from Chris Gale. He's feeling good about himself. Hey, maybe it's Melbourne. Looks like Mario is probably Melbourne. 95 meters. That's it. There's something about his stride. I'm telling you tonight. It's good to see. Wallop, not the best delivery. Still got to put him away. Hit him 95 meters, you've got no issues. Bang, off he goes. Couple of sixes in a row. The first oh. in a row. How did he hit that, bro? There's no balance there. That is insane. That's all upper body strength. He has no legs behind that. Watch, he moved his feet. A three-peat of sixes. He is on fire, and that's the easiest one. A full toss from the youngster West, not getting it right. And he really just had to help him which way. No, that was just all Chris arms, Gale. man. He's 20 on five. Oh, the body language expert to our right, Damien Flemings, all about the way he struggled with the wicket. And it's KP. That's what I mean. Get away from him. <laughs> <laughs> hang around people long enough to see the way they could carry on. Go again. Three six in a row. Oh. That's right, that's his spot. Dude, that almost hit his kneecap, but he still yacked it out of there. Here is Chris Gale. KP, you talk us through them. The last four balls of the over all went the same way. And that's probably the first ball that, uh, that put uh, oh. the big man under pressure. Well, you can ball, a good ball yep. and a ball that ball, it's in the right area, and you can hit for a six that goes 80 yards. It puts you off. You've got some bad balls to, to follow that, which... Yeah, the ball's got progressively worse. Yeah, there's a crowd behind the him. Mm. Yeah, debut last game. Yeah, yeah a good, yeah, good debut. The Harvey Norman, the hot zone. <laughs> the hot zone, <laughs> I love it. Gets met. So you're going to have to bowl a little bit shorter or fuller than that. Obviously, full tosses don't work either. We saw a couple <laughs> of them last over. Ron, he's been a star this tournament, the leading wicket taker. So Chris Gale comes back on strike. Wait, he's 26. They call him lefty. <laughs> Did they call him lefty? Bring somebody else in. Did they pull on the pitch? I mean, you got to pull him. He's giving up four in a row. He's pulling the over. He's trying to position himself to face six on the other side. So the man be surprised if he tries to uh, get off strike. Take he's got out. an opportunity. Oh. Ball swinging back into him. He's got a long on in place. He's got a square leg. He's got 45 going into position. So. If he wanted to get off strike, he could easily do that. But uh, it's good. Take your time too. He wants to get out of the as much as possible. Out. That's it's what I would do. Four sixes to start. I'm back in a little tackle for hip here. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought that was oh. That went high up. Just a nice chip shot for two. That was Chris. high up. I thought Ooh, it was. I thought that was gone. The second over. Gale force is happening. One for thirty. He's the pitch. The bowler is like, hey. He didn't go out and what he does, he Dude, goes he's smiling. Generally, be a slow ball. And he's got the bounce from New Yorker up his sleeve as well. Lockman, very good bowler. 
good experience. Lots of wickets in T20 cricket. Gets his Yorker right. Probably unlucky not to be part of that 17 man squad for the Indian T20 series. They probably went Andrew Ty or Ben Lachlan and yep. gone with Andrew Ty. Similar bowlers have been fantastic in this big bash again. Having faced Ty, his sort of slow ball is a brilliant delivery. Full toss to go. Oh. Apple. Yeah. yeah. That's oh. an apple. Woo. Second deck. Just in a little, little law to you, Brad Stink. Yeah, you think so? If you're watching the TV, have a look because <laughs> your record might get broken. A free hit, 34 of 8. Full toss it. Ah. Gee, you don't expect that from a man with his experience. 87 metres out over the offside. Oh. Ridiculous. Oh, That's a free hit. Oh. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what he said, but I'm under his breath. I'm pretty sure that was an explicit. That's the irrational language right there. <laughs> Everybody knows what he said. I'd like T6, 630 fielded. So, free hit, Gale, 34 off 8. That's right. Short. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. Oh, wow. I thought I was going top 10. <laughs> what a bad a man. <laughs> he said, he's in a hurry tonight to get there. Different pitcher? The same result. He said, we have liftoff. It was funny, right before that, I was thinking to myself, the, the, the home run he gave up before that, like, hey. Everything that bounces, he's on it. So why don't you, you know, try to pitch up high to get him to pop up? He's still yak that. He went opposite the field. Like, yeah, that's not going to work. Not too many singles there, Howie. Fair to say the Renegades are on target. Six sixes off his last seven deliveries for Chris Gale. He's trying to go where no man's gone in international cricket. And he's gone for four. So he moves to 44 of 10. This is unreal, buddy. Needs a six off the next ball to beat Yuvraj Singh's record that Kevin Peterson was at. I didn't, I didn't know Chris Gale did four, so I thought he just did sixes. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. Uh, <laughs> announcers do <laughs> make sports so much more <laughs> fun, man. My pussy's watching this at home. Shane Watson, Andre Russell. Shout from the back of the commentary box from Rock. Oh, can they bowl him any more full That was a Vladimir <laughs> swing right there, right? Yeah, that to me reminds me of Vladimir Guerrero, man. He can hit the ball Everybody anywhere. I've seen that, that guy pick up this. balls off his shoe tops. Yeah, in yeah. baseball, you're not supposed to hit the ones that hit the ground. He still hits them. I, I, only so guy I've ever seen that. For the yeah. fastest 50 yeah. ever in T20 cricket, Chris Gale is a beautiful Yorker. And he'll sneak through for a slightly anti single. <laughs> Good ball. You've still got, you got the cycle yet. And so now what happens is everybody's so far back that he can just jump stuff in front of them. Well, they're all happy now because that was a single, so now it's a different batter's turn. Thank goodness. Bradley Hodge, he's always cool under pressure. He's going to have to be very, very calm speaking to his bowlers because they'll be panicking at the moment. The two overs from the Coventry end have gone for 50. Bravo, Beaton and Neville, the next three. I don't think many were putting their hand up to bowl this next over, but it's Travis Head who has got the job from the locket in with Chris Gale. He needs five runs to equal the fastest 50 in T20 cricket. That's Yuvraj Singh back in 2007 versus England in Durban. What can Chris Gale do? He goes low! Oh, Yuvraj, it's definitely got the height! Oh, oh, hit the wall. Gone. It's me, it's me, the world buzzes in the house, ladies and gentlemen. That's 349 sixes for the corner. This over could go for 30. Travis Head, what a risk the ball is not. This could go for 30. Spinner, and Chris Dale has shown in the power plays, he's gone after spinners before, adding Samper and Co. Seven sixes is hit now, Chris Dale. All right, so what I'm going to say might be controversial, but, you know, we got to say it. So um, a lot of comments we get about, is about how cricket is baseball but with the brains. Whew. But I will say there is an advantage, I would say, in cricket 
where you have no foul territory. So it's all around. You can hit it anywhere you want. Right. When he hit that one, basically 90 degrees from where he's standing. Right. Or 270 degrees. Now you're looking at it. In baseball, that would have been a foul. Ball, that would right. have been hit off the bat, foul ball, counts as just a strike. Right. How many times in baseball do we see where a guy pulls it, or even go with oppa, but usually pulls it, and it's this literally this far off into foul territory for oh. being a home run, and it's just strike one or strike two. Some of the greatest home runs in baseball history, you know, you got people trying to will it to go back fair because it's going foul, or you got the pitcher trying to will it to go foul because you got to, it's a matter of inches, you know what I mean? If you yeah, hit if that it ball. it goes in that foul territory, it does not count for anything else but a strike. Right. It goes in the record books as strike two. Strike or two. Or strike one. If it hits the pole. It's, it's a home run. <laughs> in cricket, there's a little more of an advantage there because right. if you hit it, even if sometimes, and I'm, I know it's not the same. Right. The bat's different. It's a different shape. But in baseball, sometimes you're just swinging to stay alive and you hit it and it ricochets off and it goes this or that way. Right. I mean, that's an advantage where everything's in play. Right. The thing that goes against you in baseball is you can pop it up in foul territory. They can catch it and you are out. Right. It's not going to be a hit no matter what, right. but it can be an out. Right. So I just want to say that. That was obviously incredible. Well, well, Chris Gale was in the zone right there. He was busting out all those sixers. I think I counted seven or eight sixers that he hit right. in those uh, 12 balls. And even though we're novices to the sport, we can appreciate oh, how amazing it, that you is. You know, going yard, man. And it's, it is something special when you see an athlete do something like that. But you got to feel for the other guy. You got to feel for the guy that's pitching. And if I'm that guy, man, I'm not trying to give him any. I'm giving him garbage to hit. And, I mean, he hit garbage, actually. There was one that I it, I don't know how he hit it because it was inside. So he had to pull his, his hands all the way in. It was almost at his kneecap. So if it takes his kneecap, it's probably going to take his kneecap off. I mean, he's got the padding, but I'm sure it's still going to hurt. And he still yacked it out of there. So, you know, again, I think the biggest thing about cricket is that it's so hard where if you've got a guy that's up there and basically it's home run derby, you got to face that one one guy, two guys could carry a team. Where in baseball, you could pitch around one or two guys, okay? Talk about strategy. I'm not going to let the – there's the old adage in baseball is your best player is not going to beat me. I've seen and I've coached at the high school level, at the club level. I've walked in runs. I got bases loaded. If that's your 3-4 hitter, I will walk in a run because I still got a two-run lead. But I'm not going to give that guy a shot to hit to, to beat me. That's the Barry Bonds treatment. You know what I mean? Barry Bonds, exactly. Go back and watch some of the clips of, of how they treated Barry Bonds. I've seen that guy get walked with the bases loaded, which in a pro professional game, which never happens, because they were not going to give that guy a chance to hit a you know a three-run jack or a grand salami. So, again... I, I don't understand. I, oh, maybe the pitchers were trying to. Maybe it's just bad sport, you know what I mean, or, or bad form to do it. But I wouldn't have given them anything to hit, man. Throw the foot outside. Well, that's the thing I think, if I understand cricket, my limited experience with understanding it, as I do, is there's no pitching around in cricket. You have to go after the guy. It's mano y mano. So and there's no way to avoid, uh, avoid like, you can't walk. Well, obviously, there's no I mean, walks in We cricket. saw in the movie Lagan, and that's fictional, obviously, but we saw in the movie Lagan where they were bouncing it and they were trying to hit the players to injure them so they couldn't get out. Maybe that's your only option. Let us know if there's any way to get around someone who is hot as Chris Gale was in that in that you know twelve ball stretch. But it's like you said, they they bounced it in that hot zone. They called it right. right. They bounced it, and bounced it, and bounced it. He was he hit yard. Then they were going straight for him, no bounce. He hit that one yard. Right. I mean, like you said, I mean this guy. When you're in the zone, and I've never been there before. <laughs> when you're in the zone. Yeah, but you are in the zone, and there's nothing. But we have seen it in sports before. Um, I'm a huge Lakers fan, huge Kobe fan. Take oh. everything about his personal life aside. Fantastic basketball player. Right. And the most, the greatest thing as a Lakers fan watching him play in those almost 20 years was when Kobe was on fire, there was nothing that was going to stop him. No. And he wasn't even going to stop himself. He would get the ball, and he would hit seven or eight, threes in a row from any distance. Seth Curry does it too. Right. But it was the most amazing thing because Lakers fans knew that once or twice a season he was going to get in that hot streak and you just could not stop him. Trace McGray did the same thing several times. It's an amazing thing to watch. And as a baseball player or a cricketer, now cricketer you keep going over and over. Like you mentioned in baseball you get that one out of nine at-bats to hit. And if you hit a home run, 
next at bat, a home run. There's all this time in between where you're cooling off. Right, right, right. There's got to be eight more people that go before you now, get. I'm the, not the, saying Chris Gale is not exhausted after hitting all those Sixers or whatever. I'm sure he right. was. There's just differences in the sport. And I honestly am not saying one's better than the other. I like baseball more because I spent way more time invested in baseball. But I'm not going to say it's better or worse. But there's differences in strategy there. But let's not say it's brainless. I mean, there's a lot of strategy. It's not a simple layman's game. There's a lot that goes into it. But... I appreciate from Shoa Shaw the request for this because that was it was a great video. That was fun to watch. It was a great video. Um, you know, I, I guess my last question is when you talk when when you're looking at cricket, how would you defend something like that? You know what I mean? Would you if you cannot mono mono? I mean, get away from him. Can't get away, that. stay away from him. <laughs> can't do it. You know what I'm saying? Stay away from him because if that's how it is, like you have to pitch to him, man. If you if you've got a guy like that on your team. You know, where this guy, forget about it. He's going to go up there and he's going to absolutely rake. You carry one or two of those guys on your team, man. Good luck. You know what I mean? The only thing I can think of, and let us know how the rules go. The only thing I can think of, since I don't know all the rules, I would have a different bowler every single ball, every single over, a different bowler going so you can see a little difference in the delivery, a little difference in the way the ball moves. I'm not sure if there's a minimum where they have to have at least five balls bowled or whatever it is. Let us know. But that's the way I would attack it. This guy's in the zone. Let's just give him so many different looks, and hopefully someone can get him out. <laughs> Either that or pray. <laughs> but we, as always, we appreciate the, the request. We love Cricket Tuesday, and we're going to keep going until the copyrights tell us to stop. <laughs> um, we've learned a few tricks about how we can avoid that, so hopefully this works out. But if you ha- we have lots of requests, but if you want your requests heard, then go ahead and leave in the comment section. I have just updated our Patreon page. We have several more tiers now, like a bonehead. We only had the two. We have a dollar tier. We have a two dollar tier. We have a three dollar tier, a seven, a ten. And any of those tiers gets you higher access to make requests than in the comment section. So if you want to support Born Reviews, consider being a dollar patron and helping us out and getting your requests heard. And you'll get your name shout out on a video and many other perks that I've included on the Patreon page. Yes, sir. So Join Argent and the rest of the bunch and help us out. But until next time. That was a sixer. <laughs> Another one. <laughs>